Last week, we talked about the impacts of stress on our bodies and mind. We looked at the different types of stress, the eustress or good stress, and distress, the bad stress. We also talked about the duration, acute being short-term and chronic being long-term. And lastly, we talked about the four Fs, fight, flight, freeze, and fawn. This week, we're gonna look at some tools, activities, and protective measures to address both acute and chronic distress in our lives. I wanna begin with a short clip from Dr. Deepak Chopra, who has spent years researching wellness and the impacts of stress. The best way to manage stress is to realize that stress is the perception of threat. It's not in you and it's not in the world. It's how you interact with the world. As a metaphor, I like to think of waves on the ocean. If you're a skillful surfer, you enjoy every wave. And if you're not prepared, then every wave is a disaster. For me, the best ways to manage stress is to be present in the moment, to make conscious choices, to take breathing breaks, and a daily practice of meditation, which should be about 15 to 20 minutes, preferably twice a day. Success is defined as the progressive realization of worthy goals, the ability to love and have compassion, and to get in touch with your own creative center, which is your innermost being, which spiritual traditions call the soul. It's not through the mind that you become successful. Mind creates stress. The more stressed you are about success, the less successful you will be. Those goals will give you happiness and everybody else who's affected by you will also be happy. Sometimes the idea of meditation, mindfulness, yoga, and other items are associated with the religion or spirituality. And sometimes they are deeply core component of a religion. However, the idea of being mindful or of meditation is really at its core an exercise in self-awareness. It is to calm the inner monologue and promotes focus. While it is important to note that fact, it is also important to note that not every stress reduction approach is right or comfortable for everyone. Please make sure that you use your own compass to determine which tools are going to be right for you. Let's look at one stress reduction tip that can work in cases of both acute and chronic stress, and that is music. Most people have a natural connection with music, and it's shown research-backed evidence that it impacts our moods and feelings. However, one thing I've noticed is that sometimes when we are picking the wrong music for our needs. When someone mentions being stressed and wanting to listen to music to decompress, sometimes I hear songs kind of like this. While the tune is catchy, songs with a high rate of beats per minute or BPM tend to be something that you may want to listen to before a sporting event to hype yourself up, but generally not the best for reducing stress. This song that we just played has a BPM of 190. Part of stress reduction is helping your body reach something called homeostasis or balance. When we're experiencing stress, one of the things that increases in response to stress is our heart rate. One goal of music is to help reduce our heart rate to find balance and change your focus from the stressor. A song with a 50 to 80 BPM is considered ideal for stress reduction as your body will start to naturally match the rhythm of the music over time. This song would be a better fit at 80 beats per minute. Throughout this video, we'll mention Hillary's wellness center area of, counseling, of the counseling website several times. She has curated a great list of both soothing sounds and music stations that can be calming to try. Another area of our bodies that typically becomes out of balance is our breathing when we experience stress. Breathing exercises help to get our bodies back into a calm state. By practicing some guided breathing, you're training your body and mind to slow down, refocus, and take a different perspective. I wanna share this video with you and have us practice for just a minute today.
So sitting comfortably, just taking a big deep breath in through the nose, out through the mouth. As you breathe in, noticing how the body expands. As you breathe out, just watching the body soften as you gently close the eyes. And rather than the mind leading the breath, allow the breath to lead the mind. Notice the sensation of the breath. Notice it where you feel it in the body. If you need to, you can just gently place your hand on the stomach. And just following that rising and falling sensation. Nothing else to do. Allowing thoughts to come and go. And when you're ready, just gently opening the eyes again. How's that feel? I know I'm feeling a little more relaxed now. Hillary also has some great guided breathing or guided meditation videos for you to check out. Plus there's some great apps also, also available to you. Calm and Headspace are two apps that you may want to check out that you may find helpful. Moving away from the idea of calming the stress away and putting some protective measures in place, the idea of exercise and physical activity is actually a very strong st stress reduction component. Engaging in regular exercise can support our stress levels in two primary ways. First, it helps us stay healthy. Our bodies are all linked systems. When one area is struggling, it impacts many of the others. If our body is not healthy, our mind can also often be brought down with the ship, and it also creates added stress. By regularly exercising, you are actively reducing one area where chronic stress stems from. The second area that exercise helps with is in response to stress. When you exercise, your body releases endorphins. These are feel-good chemicals in our brain. Some may call it even a runner's high. Exercise is good and your brain rewards you for taking care of your physical health. These little doses of endorphins can help when you find yourself feeling stressed. So there are some great science-backed reasons why pausing something stressful and taking a walk, hitting the gym, or going on a run has short and long-term positive effects. Connection is another area that has also shown very positive impacts on stress level. Positive connection with others activates something called mirror neurons in your brain. If you're around someone who is happy and smiling, you're naturally more inclined to smile and mirror how they are feeling. Similarly, being around those who are angry, stressed, sad, or otherwise feeling not great can cause you to mirror those similar emotions. Think about who you surround yourself with. How is their influence on you? Are they positive friends? Are they people who lift you up? Seek out those who have a positive mindset and invest in those relationships. Not many people will tell you this, but it is okay to break ties with toxic people in your life. Not all toxic relationships can be broken, say in the case of parents, but many people keep relationships with people who are not healthy for them because they didn't know they had a choice. You do. These connections help you not only reflect on your feelings, but also to express them. Connecting with others lets you have an opportunity to cry, laugh, complain, and relax. These connecting experiences are also natural stress reducers that help you feel better. And finally, some academic stress tips. Here are four quick tips that will help with some of the academic stressors that may be coming your way. In addition to those items before, four ways to combat stress in the academic areas are number one, organization, number two, focusing on the good, number three, starting small, and number four, reducing comparisons. First, most students I see are stressed academically and they have some level of struggle with organization and time management. They may also have issues here with number four, but starting to use an agenda, calendar, or checklists can actually help reduce stress through keeping yourself from falling behind. Try starting with using Google Calendar through your school Gmail account to add important deadlines, tests, or quiz dates, or maybe even checkpoints for some of your larger projects. By planning ahead, you can avoid the stresses of falling behind. Number two, there is power in positive thinking. Very rarely in life, 
Even when we do fail, do we fail at 100% of the problem? Even if we get a 40 out of 100% on an exam, you did something right, and the goal is to identify how we did that, what worked, and let's try to do more of that. Instead of focusing on the 60% you got wrong, changing the perspective and focusing on what you got right, you're able to see the effective strategies that you already have in place and build from there. Number three, in the same notion, sometimes we try to swallow the whole elephant instead of eating it one bite at a time. Start somewhere small, be consistent, and commit to regular involvement with things like missing assignments, and you'll slowly work your way back to where you want to be. When you look at the mountain, it can be overwhelming, but when we look at our next 10 steps, it is often very approachable. And number four, finally avoid the temptation to compare yourself to others. You are unique and special, and we want you to be happy and okay with that. We do not want you to be a cookie cutter copy of someone else. This may mean something different for each of you. Perhaps that means taking two AP courses instead of the four that you were planning on because that's what someone expects or maybe you think they expect. Perhaps it's challenging yourself more because someone expects little of you. Comparing yourself to someone else sells yourself short. Be you and be your best you where you are. These general tips, tricks, and tools can be applied to many circumstances. I hope that you give some a try and give it a little time. These are not necessarily fast fix solutions, but something that will benefit you over time. If you want some additional help with stress or any of these tools that I've covered, please, re please reach out to me, Ms. Dolberg, Hillary, or another trusted adult. We're here to help. Have a great week, Lakers, and welcome back.